put this shit together. Do I look bad? No. Don't lie. You look like shit. I'm sure. I'd like to uh, welcome you to HD Presents the Garage. Um, oh, introduce yourself. Tell me how old you are. How old am I? Yes. I'm 27. My name's Leticia. Like, you need to know all that, but. Yeah. I'm from the north side of Toledo. Hey, I'm from the north. Huh. So, you was telling me a uh, situation right now going with CSB. Is you comfortable with talking about yeah, that? For sure. People need to know. About how they they is for real. So, so give us a little background on what's happening. How many kids do you have? I got two. I got a um a two year old. He about to be three this month on the twenty eighth, and then I got a three month old. He'll be four months on the third. Okay. Yeah. And right now, where are they? Um and um. Foster home right now, through because CSB. Yeah. And what what do you, what, what's the reason for them taking it? Because um I got past um drug history use um I was I went I um put myself into um a rehab like three months or so before I had my son because I was using with him, but I got put on my um. I went to a rehab, and I ended up staying in that bitch for 89 days. Because at first, it wasn't even like, I was only there to get myself clean and get out my meds and stuff like that, and I was going to leave. But then I got comfortable with the situation, rec recognizing everything, like my whole situation that was going on and what was best for me and my kids. And like I told him from the jump, I'm like, I'm only staying here for like two weeks, but it kept on going farther and farther. But besides all that, when I got, before I got um, into the rehab, um, I had went into the hospital, to the emergency room because um, I was leaking fluid, but it, it ended up being nothing. But that same day, it was so crazy. I've been calling, I was trying to get myself into a different treatment. So I could um, start in that same day I was supposed to call my sister made me go there and then So wait, um, what's your drug of choice? Um, cocaine and um, opiates. Okay, um, what kind of opiates? Uh, pills? Uh... Um, shit, if, it, if yeah, I would do that, but mostly it was on fentanyl, on fentanyl. Snorting and mm -hmm. shit? Snorting. You ever shot? Hell no. Uh-uh. All right, um, so... I mean, I ain't saying that it's any better, but it didn't get that far. Thank God. But, um. So, when did, uh, what you dropped dirty for? Um, cocaine and fentanyl. And I was honest with them and everything. The hospital was cool. It just came to the caseworker that they end up, um, giving me because I dropped dirty. I still talk to her to this day because I do her group, but I graduated from it. But all this stuff was willing, you know, everything that CSB even got me doing, I was already planning on doing and stuff. And it's just like they make it seem like it was, they, it was made, like they, it was their choice for making me do it, you know what I mean? They failed to realize that, that I was already on that, on that road of doing everything that they, they want me to do. Every, my case plan is what I made, like, because I was already doing the shit. Yeah. You know, and with them involved, it kind of made it a little like harder because like just knowing that you got these people on you on, on your case, you know, it's like stressing because they make it seem like you're not doing which. Yeah, I fucked up once and on cocaine and I end up telling her before they found out, you know, so they didn't they let that go. But. Like, after that, they just assumed that I was still getting high and shit. And I wasn't doing enough for her, basically. That's what she said. Like, I needed to do, um, she needed to see more progress. But... Let me ask you, what's the first drug you ever did and what age? Um, 
marijuana, and I was like 10. Okay. When, what's the hardest drug and what that you did in what age? Um, crack. And that was when, um, the first time I did that. See, the first time I did it, I didn't get addicted. I just tried it with my best friend, and she gave me a shotgun. Mm-hmm. And I, I liked it, but I didn't do it, like, after that. Until, like, a couple years later, and I hit the pipe. And that's when it was over. <laughs> what age was it that you were? I was 25, I want to say. When you hit the pipe? Yeah. But I, I only hit it, and then I didn't go, I didn't start doing it a lot but then it happened again I was over there like maybe half a year or a year again just chilling with her and stuff and she was getting high she was shooting and smoking so um I hit that shit and I met this other bitch and she was doing that and I started doing it it was only I only did it for almost a year and I stopped and stuff and I just started doing it again but right now Tell me, like, explain to me, like, so, when you said when you hit the pipe, it was over. Mm-hmm. I was chasing the dragon. <laughs> That's how you explain it? Yeah. Like, I was, break that down to me. Like, the one, I was smoking and smoking, but this one time I hit it, and, like, I fucking went in a trance type shit, and my ears started ringing. And I, that's what I was looking for. I was chasing that, and I ain't never felt that shit since then, for real. I felt other ways real high that was addicting, but that first, when I first heard that, I was like, I noticed after a while, I'm like, I'm trying to find that, and I still haven't got it, you know? Do other people that smoke say I They, I've heard that before, yeah, I've asked people, they, they said that shit too. Mm-hmm. It's like the cigarettes. I was smoking. I was when my mom and them would leave. I'd be like nine, eight, seven years old. My sister would be watching me, looking at me like I'm a dumbass, lighting my mom's cigarette butts off the, <laughs> the out the fucking uh, stove, and looking out the window, making sure and my mom and them were nobody's pulling up. What age was that? Like around seven. Like, yeah, let like, me ask you a question. Do you think you had an addictive personality? Yeah, I learned the. I learned the. Um, Recognize that and admit, I mean, agree and, you know, yeah, agreeing with it and seeing, like, and accepting that. Yeah. So, like, if you had a choice now, you, you said you do it opiates. Like, I'm but an no. ear hustling person. I, I am. No, you're I, fine. This is what I do. You know, so, I, you're married, right? Engaged. Engaged. Oh, yeah. Okay. How old is he? Okay. He's thirty-six. Thirty-six. Okay. Did did, did you do? You did the opiates with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you if well, I ask you your drug of choice. What would it be? Crack or opiates? Opiates. Opiates. Yes. Like, if you explain the earring <coughs> for the crack, what would you explain the opiates as? It's actually kind of for real satisfying every time. Pretty much. It's not really like the chasing that, you know? Because if you get some good fatty, I mean, that shit, you cool, you get high, you know? It's not like that. Like the dope, like the crack, at all. And like it's a total. And it's just a, like yeah, hell yeah. And that's another reason why I would, I would do that. I would be too down off the opiate, so mm-hmm. I'll do some coke, you know. Yeah. To wake me up, but then go back. You know what I mean? It's just that feeling, like that numbing feeling, for real. Yeah. Just like don't feel shit when you're high, you know. That's the main reason why, like, I I like to do it, you know. But you got to come up sometime. Right. And then you notice how deep you can got. Right. Yeah. I was in denial for a while. But it came real, like, I came to be accepting to 
my whole situation, you know, and I start, my eyes start opening and I start seeing things for what it really was, you know, especially with like the drug history, like it's a fucking cycle. You know, I recognized that a few years ago when I just stopped doing perks and was I started doing ecstasy and drinking all the time. And that's one of the first things I was really doing before I started getting into that deep shit, you know. And I'm like, damn. And it's like around the same time of the year, too, the shit happens, too. And I'm like, so I know I need to break that shit. But was it mentally? <clears throat> no. Dealing with something mental? For sure. Yeah. That's why I always come around the same time of the Shit, year. Shit, yeah, especially like the winter. I mean, I guess the winter's bad for everybody. I see. I've been realizing a lot of people be saying that like it's depressing and stuff, and I agree. It's just like the weather for real. Yeah, and just sitting in the house all the time, not really having nothing to mm -hmm. people to talk to and stuff like right. that. Right. It can get rough. You know? Yeah, but I be trying. Like I don't really talk to many people because I'm trying to stay focused you know because i need to get my boys back yeah that's the goal for sure and it can't get no fucking it can't get no more worse than this this is the bottom you know this is it this is i feel like this is the worst that it could fucking get well no i i call it, 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 it well i've been living around drugs a long time you know and i, I call it the omega plunge the what? The Omega Plunge. Mm -hmm. Like the, the CSB moment. Like you either make a chain, uh, you make a choice to go all the way in or go all the way out. Yeah. Yes. You know? It's one or the other with this. For real. And I just deal with this last year with my uh, fiance's girls getting took for good. Like they didn't even give him a chance. He was in prison. They wouldn't let him know until after the fact they had court and shit and try to make it seem like he wasn't interested in getting them but he always we always kept in contact with the fucking foster mom and shit and he was taking them stuff and talking to him you know keep in contact but now since they got custody like I've been trying to contact them for him and now it's like so, I don't but, hear from him so how old was them the, your husband's daughters um six and five I want to say Six and five, and how old was you at that time? I was 26. 26. I never even got to meet his daughters, though. Oh. He was going through this when um, I met him. He had just got out of prison, and his baby mama got caught up in a prostitution ring, and they was involved, so they took him. But they was going, they was getting molested and shit like that at her her grand, her her parents' house from her dad. So, do you, do you think it was bad that they was took? Mm, we both agree on that. They was no, we don't. But we wanted them. We wanted to try giving them, getting them, but they wouldn't give them a chance. For real. But he was in prison and you was on drugs. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, yeah, I was, but um, yeah, I was. But so you got to be honest with yourself. Do you think that would have been a great predicament to put a five and six no, year old I already man. knew it wasn't because the living situation before all that because I was staying on my basement you know and I it was the it was I already know I, I thought of those things before you know so and, yeah and he was in prison yeah that. and he agreed too <clears throat> like okay. you know we do want them but our situation as far as living and other situations yeah. wasn't right for them, you know. And, and then, then I didn't, didn't know yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. They didn't even know me. I, you know what I mean? So it's like, it happened, like, that's why I want to try when he gets out and gets on his feet and stuff because he's finally talking about leaving the streets and working, you know. So he never worked, came from Cuba, you know, like, he never really worked. He ain't have a job. So, but he agrees to do it now, and I'm like very looking forward to this. I'm tell, I'm hoping that he can get his shit together as well because we both are triggers to each other. I want to say. Well, that that's what I like. Let me say this. So you said his baby mama went to jail for prostitution, so he was pimping. No, uh, -uh. she was doing that on her own. He was in prison. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, she was in prison. And he didn't. I mean, he was in prison, and he didn't know half the shit that was going on. Okay. Until so he got have home. You, have you ever done anything prostitution wise? Or oh no, it was close, very close. I recognized it a couple of times, but no, no. Yeah, because you know what you're saying that I, I I couldn't just let it pass. I had to ask because yeah. he introduced you to opiates. Yeah. No, I was already um, doing perks and stuff, and he was too. He was he um he was on the Xanax and perks, and that's what he's prescribed though. He's prescribed the Xanax, but he also because um, prescribed perks, but because he blew off his big toe, so his shit's all fucked up and stuff. So, but he ain't. But he prescribed himself, you know. Yeah, he's he prescribed himself with the perks. And, yeah, he was getting prescribed um, his Xanax. Through a doctor, and he but was, so he really ain't prescribed. Not the perks; they didn't they didn't improve the perks. Cause he, he, so he, he shot off a, his toe. Yeah, with the Play shotgun. <laughs> oh shit! His big toe. I don't. I didn't. Wasn't with him. I didn't know him then. Oh. And like, he didn't. I, he didn't have right. Um, like care for it. like he didn't go to keep up with any shit. It was bad. He said that shit was nasty. Well, let me ask you this, though. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about nobody, but I, I say this thing. It's something called can't get right. Mm. All right. He shot off his big toe <laughs> 12 gauge. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the opiates. You know he a trigger. He just lost his kids. He was in prison, got out, went back. Uh, yeah. Got, oh yeah, impregnated you. Mm-hmm. And went back. Yeah. So what is, like, that? that's a... Our whole relationship, he's been locked up most of the time. Then we've been together for real. Hmm. I think you, your addicted personality is addicted to him. I think about that sometimes. That's why I want to, like, see if we can get it together. Like, you know what I mean? If it could be something else, you know, if it could be positive. That's why I tell him at the same time, like, going to see a CTF to, like, try to get something out of it. And he's already talking about changing his life, about getting a job and shit. And telling, like, the reason why he lives is, like, if he didn't have me and my boys, our boys, he wouldn't be looking forward to getting coming home, he says. He's like, I would have no reason to come home. How long do we got right now? Um, until May. May? Well, yeah. That's not, that's not horrible. Mm -mm. The first bit he, was, he did was nine months, but before all that, he did seven months. He went to he went to camps. They sent him to the camps, federal, prison, all types of different little places for that whole time. Yeah. So you think, uh, what, what is it that, that makes you want to have to give it a shot because I do care and love them you know and we do I got kids that. together and I you know want to at least see if it can work you know I feel like it got that chance I mean they should have that chance to give it a try you know all the time how long have y'all been together we met Two years ago, around Thanksgiving, and um, we was together. We he got locked up, and I want to say like it was before Christmas. I know that I want to say like December ninth or some shit. And he didn't did eight months. That was nine months. Nine months. So he got out in like October or something like that. How long did you stay out? Until, um, oh, I want to say until, when did he go back? It was like in November. It was around the same time, I want to say, for real. <clears throat> October. He wasn't there for the... All right, so, let, let me see. Let me hit that second, please. Uh, I want to have a half one. I don't smoke them like that. Oh. And I like one in the middle. <laughs> Thank you. Is there something I can ask you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm. 
Hey, kill. Get that motherfucker out of here. Knock a motherfucker out. <laughs> All right, so, um, man, it, it kind of sounds like a, a loyalty. Let me ask you, what is your loyalties right now in this world? My kids. My fiance. Yeah. My sobriety. Take away nine, that's um, uh, 15, right? 15 months. And he been in there so right now for about how many? Six. Six? Take Damn away six almost. months. That's nine months you've been doing. How mm -hmm. long of that nine months you've been high? The whole time. The whole time. So. Well, with him, yeah. 